And good evening once again, day 1218 of the Trump administration, 166 days to go until the presidential election. The pandemic has now claimed over 95,000 American lives. And as we continue our effort to illustrate what a death toll of 95,000 looks like, it's the equivalent of losing everyone on board 613 Boeing 737 passenger jets. Put another way, the equivalent of the crash of a 737 with 155 souls on board every day for 613 days. And among the many ways life has changed for all of us over these past nine weeks, there's continuing controversy now over what many Americans are now wearing to try to keep this virus at bay. Tonight, the photo the president did not want the world to see has surfaced. Trump was photographed apparently unknowingly during his behind the scenes tour at Ford Motor today in Michigan. The White House, of course, recommended face coverings for the rest of us over two months ago now. That's when the president told us he couldn't see himself wearing one while greeting, quote, presidents, prime ministers, dictators, kings and queens at the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office. And here's the president's explanation when asked why he went without the mask for the entirety of his tour at the Ford plant, defying both company policy and Michigan law. I did wear, I had one on before. I wore one in this back area, but I didn't want to give the press the pleasure of seeing it. But no, where I had it in the back area, I did put a uh, mask on. I did, I had goggles, goggles and a mask right back. Well, why would you not be and here's another one. Why would you not here. be wearing it? For no because reason? in this area, why would you, you not be wearing it, it here, sir? Uh, not necessary here. Well, everybody's been tested and I've been tested. In fact, I was tested this morning. Well, that's their choice. I was given. I was given a choice. What about the example that it would set for other Americans? Well, I think it sets an example. I think it sets an example both ways. Once Trump left, Ford Motor issued this statement, and we quote: Executive Chairman Bill Ford encouraged President Trump to wear a mask when he arrived. He wore a mask during a private viewing of three Ford GTs from over the years. The president later removed the mask for the remainder of the visit. Michigan, by the way, has well north of 53,000 coronavirus cases. That number still rising. Not long ago, Rachel Maddow asked Michigan's governor about Trump's casual approach to wearing a mask. It's really important that anyone with a platform has a responsibility to make sure that they model precisely what we're asking everyone else to do. This is about public health, not one person's or another. This is about all of us and anyone in a position of power and responsibility, I hope, emulates and, and does precisely what they're asking everyone else to do. While it is true of whatever he does or says or anywhere he goes, there were plenty of political undertones to Trump's Michigan trip today. Before visiting the Ford plant, the president held a roundtable with local African-American leaders, covered quite a few topics. People from Detroit and friends from the area have said it's incredible the job that we've done. We've made a lot of governors look very good. I just got off the phone with CDC and I talked about churches. I said, I want the churches to open and the people want the churches to open. And I think you'll have something come down very soon from CDC. We want to get our churches back. You have a lot of, uh, unfortunately, in this case, Democrat governors. I think they think it's good politics to keep it closed. But what are they doing? They're hurting themselves. I think they look at it as a uh, possible November question. It's not a November question. It happens to be very bad for them. The speech Trump later gave at the Ford plant, complete with attacks on Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden, sounded to a lot of folks like a campaign speech. And while in Michigan, a key swing state, let's not forget, he continued his unfounded attacks on voting by mail. What we want is we want good, straight, honest voting. OK, honest voting. And by the way, if that could be honest, which obviously it can't be, you get a ballot, you're sitting in your bedroom signing it. Who knows who's signing it? Who knows that it ever gets to your house? Who knows that they don't pirate? You know, they uh, they pirate these uh, applications. They print new uh, voting forms and then they send them around. People sign them or one person signs them with different pens and a different signature every time. 
It's it's uh, obviously there's going to be fraud. We're not babies. There's tremendous fraud. Tonight, Politico reports one of Trump's election fraud conspiracy theories has collapsed. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement announced it found no widespread voter fraud in the 2018 races for Senate and governor there. Trump had complained loudly about fraud and theft in Democratic rich Broward and Palm Beach counties. None was found. The economic fallout from this pandemic virus continues to be devastating as more Americans continue to lose their jobs. Finding work is nearly impossible for so many. 2.4 million more workers filed for unemployment last week. That means more than 38 million Americans have lost their jobs that we know of over the past nine weeks. There's deepening concern about whether there will be another relief package and what it will contain. Well, today, Trump said there's much more the government can do to help. The country is going to be in a very good place, very good place. There's a lot of ammunition left in the country in terms of the Fed and the Treasury and all the people that are working on it. We have a lot of ammunition left. Uh, unlimited ammunition if we need it, but we won't need it. Earlier on this network, however, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, the Democrat who represents the area in Michigan that the president visited today, spoke eloquently about the new reality for so many Americans. I still have friends dying. I have a memorial, drop by memorial when I'm through with this interview, and I have a funeral tomorrow. My friends are still dying and people are scared. They're worried about, they don't want to get COVID. It's still real. It's still out there. But then they're also worried about their job. They're worried about how they're going to put food on the table. Can they pay the rent and mortgage? How are they going to take care of their kids? This is a real fear that working men and women across the country are feeling. One more thing from the president. As he left the White House for Andrews Air Force Base and ultimately for Michigan this morning, he offered an update on his own efforts to avoid catching COVID-19. See if you can follow this. He is talking about testing and his own test results. So how long do you expect to take hydroxychloroquine? I think it's another day. I had a two-week regimen of uh, hydroxychloroquine. And I've taken it, I think, just about two weeks. I think it's another day. So, and I'm still here. I'm still here. And I tested very positively in, a, in another sense. So this morning, yeah, I tested positively toward negative, right? So, no, I tested uh, perfectly this morning. Meaning, meaning I tested negative. But that's the way of saying it, positively toward the negative. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.